Hi, it's Anna here, hailing from my studio here in New Jersey. I got a lot of uh, requests for tutorial on painting a rose, and that's why we are here today. I'm going to teach you how to paint a simple red, red rose. This is my supply list, as usual. Take a screenshot of it for your reference. I'm using a 12 by 9 inch 100% cotton cold pressed paper and my faithful uh, Chinese watercolor press from Dian Dian Didi. There's also a list of all the colors that I use for this rose, but don't panic if you don't have them on your palette. Just use what you have, something closest to it. Um, and uh, recommend that you use mostly translucent colors because we're gonna be doing a lot of layering. The info on the ink pen is in the bottom. And here is the rose that I use as a reference for the painting. And I selected her because I liked her shape and I liked her splendor. But I especially liked her gesture. We think of Chester belonging to humans only, but everything in nature has Chester. When it comes to flowers, they can be happy. You look at them, they can be melancholy. Their chest, the way they hang or they are upright, um, they can be playful. Or like this rose, this rose, when I look at it, it's very feminine. It's curvy, inviting, it's seductive, very feminine. And that's what I liked about it because Rose is a queen of flowers. In this photo, I drew the main line, which is the pink line that makes all the magic for this flower and makes it so seductive. You can see also some other lines that I put on the bud that are also very wonderful and curvy. And I'm gonna show you in my drawing here how I made sure carefully to draw in all the right lines. Um, as I, I added other things, uh, but I didn't make it exactly the same, um, the uh, leaves and such, but I definitely took care that I um, cut the curve right and that preserves the gesture of this flower. I have some other lines for the leaves and the buds there and uh, those are important but the main thing is that pink curve of the rose itself. I drew the rose more to the left of the midline and then added the two buds to bring a little balance on the right and then the leaves to bring weight and interest into the bottom. Okay, here I'm finally starting to put some pigment on the paper and the light is coming from the left, kind of more from the top. And uh, I'm using only a red, Queen Acridone red with most part of this flower. Um, and then for the darkest parts, I uh, added the Queen Acridone permanent rose to get some darkness into the flower. So you can see that I drew in the petals and now I'm going and uh, painting them in, leaving the edges of the petals white so that helps to separate the petals and also brings uh, out this kind of sun-kissed look for the flower. I'm adding darkness into the parts of the um, petals that are kind of in the deep shadow areas of the petals. You can see how carefully I go. This is speed, you know, I have speed up the video some uh, just because 
this takes so long, uh, you would be bored looking at me in real life painting this. But you can see how I keep adding darkness as I go into the deepest parts of the petals that are still inside, not opened. Now, if this was a light color rose, I would need to use maybe purple or blue for the shadow parts to get darkness. But because red itself is already so highly pigmented and very strong color, I'm able to just use red even for the very darkest shadowy parts. Uh, it goes enough dark. Uh, so I don't need to add another color on this rose um, until later on you see I add yellow in it. But for the darkness, the red itself suffice. So here you can see that I'm starting to do the main belly, <laughs> you could call it, of the flower. And this is now really important that I keep that um, line very crisp. The one I talked about that gives the gesture of the flower and all the shadows um, and the highlights, I also keep them to uh, indicate the same line to give shape for this um, belly part of the rose, that it is round and um, curvy. So as I keep adding and kind of it's still wet all over, I just keep adding a little bit more darkness. There in the end it's starting to be dry. Um, but I keep on going and adding a um, little bit more red as I go and starting to work on the front petal. The belly is now dry and um, I still leave white edge. That's how I preserve all the white in my paintings. You always ask me how do you do the white? You can see how I do it. I, I just keep the edges a little bit white showing and I leave little dots of white here and there for the um, sun, kind of sun uh, highlighted parts. And then here you can see how I utilize a little piece of tissue to bring also highlights. When there is wet on wet and I need a highlight that is more crisp, I'll just tap my paper on it and I um, get a more crisp, lighter part of the petal. And that's really helpful to utilize a tissue like that. And I'm so sorry that this video is so shaky. I didn't realize, I think my table has just kind of started to shake a lot. I need to tighten the pulse <laughs> on it. So I, I know it's a little bit bothersome to watch it, but I can't do anything about it at this point. So I apologize. Hopefully it doesn't make you nauseous. Anyway, so here is the bottom part of the uh, rose and that's the darkest, uh, really most shadowiest part of the rose. So I keep, I added there that uh, quinacridone permanent rose color in it. And turning around, um, this part I wanted to show you where I had painted the petal there totally red, but I needed highlights. So I went, put water in it and I rubbed some of the red off and were able to get the edge lighter. And that's another way of getting highlights into your flower is 
lifting, it's called lifting the color off. Here I go and I um, reinforce some of the folds of that uh, petal. Now I'm starting to paint the side petal. And you can see how I use my uh, tissue paper to pick up some of the color from the edge. So I will get that feeling of this uh, painting, um, this petal being curvy. And I'm adding darkness. It's uh, pretty dry right now, the medium red part, and I'm adding darkness. into the deep part of the petal. And again, this is the fourth layer. I'm just adding darkness, layering. And this is the quinacridone permanent rose color. And I wanted to also go and uh, reinforce some of the uh, folds of the petal and make them so direct and how the edge and the petal turns downwards a little bit. More darkness in. I want there to be a lot of darkness against that main curve of the rose, so it's really emphasized because that's the beautiful part of this rose. And just keep on emphasizing the curve, how it goes, using my paper when it gets too dark. Sorry, it's so shaky, the video. There is a little bit of uh, left on the top, which I go and now fill in. Now you can see that I'm starting to add the yellow that I was talking about. Queen Acridon Red is a little bit on the cold side of the red and uh, I wanted to give this rose more of a warm look like it's in the sun and it's really more of a red than a pink rose so i'm adding this yellow warm yellow um, glow into it and i'm adding it on all the red parts of the flower i'm leaving the white pretty much as white and just adding the yellow into the pink parts and especially the dark pink parts or red parts I guess you can see there I'm putting quite a lot of yellow into the uh, darkest parts and now it you can see how it has turned into a more warm uh, tone from what it was before and that's another way of using layering in the watercolor painting to show the original color and then put color on the top and uh, it changes the tone of the uh, original paint. I'm starting to do the leaves and the um, stem of the rose. This is the main leaf that is part of the curve, the way um, this rose curves and I want to make sure that I get that really nicely done. So I gotta apologize, my uh, camera kind of uh, shifted, moved somehow while I was uh, painting these leaves and I was painting some parts of it, a lot of it, 
out of the frame so uh, this is a little bit um, not so detailed tutorial on the leaves and the buds but at least the rose itself I got it completely on the video anyway um, it is what it is um, here you can see I'm using the ultramarine blue to bring darkness and on the shadow sides of the leaves and the buds and again using um, or leaving the white of the paper uh, carefully to show um, uh, the glow of the sun also separation of some of the uh, veins and petals of the leaves and darkness with that blue ultramarine blue there that's in the back of the rose this leaf I'm trying to be very careful with the tips of the leaves for them to have very fine endings and kind of cute sweet little curve in them adding a little bit of red sewing in the bud and a lighter red on the sunny side and while I'm here painting these leaves and stem and the buds need to pay attention how I use not only green and it's the olive green that is the main green I'm using green that I'm using I'm using the blue for the shadowy parts and then I am using um, the quinacridone gold I'm using quinacridone red in them and also red brown the leaves are not made only out of green they are made out of um, different colors little bit of um, mixing and dropping colors here and there make them look so much more interesting than just trying to use one color on the leaves maybe in reality the leaves look like they are just one color but as an artist to make your painting interesting you have to take um, just have a license to make things more um, colorful more sweet so that your um, viewer has beautiful things beautiful colors to look at and their eyes can just feast on your painting i think i'm also using the yellow green in the leaves and the stem And you can see that this stem is not a straight stem. It comes, it curves from the rose and then it has that joint over there where the brown and green meet and it bends again. Those little details when it comes to stems of the flowers or branches of bushes or trees make a huge difference in in the quality of your paintings so please um, start learning how to pay attention to those uh, things that we don't really value so much and but they make your painting 
look very stiff and um, when your branches are straight and they don't have that kind of delicate natural way of turning and twisting uh, and it definitely adds to the gesture of your um, whatever you are painting uh, whether it is a tree or if it is a flower here I'm doing uh, the leaf on the right and you can see how I'm lifting to get highlights and then I'm adding Queen um, Acridone gold in it. I have added also red into the stem where the branch goes um, or uh, separates from the main stem that brings the red color into the bottom of the painting as well. So you want to have colors that move around the painting. Uh, so you can just feel free to add a little bit of red, the color of the rose, in different parts of your leaves and your stem. And also be very careful when you um, do your pine branches it's the leaves grow out of that they are more delicate and as you can see when I'm painting the leaves I leave the veins white and that's how I get all those white little speckles into my leaves. People keep asking, how do you do it? I don't do white out, I just do leave white of the paper. That's why I love these Chinese brushes because they have that lovely, very, very thin um, tip and it allows me to do this without having to change brushes midway. I can just do everything with the same brush pretty much. And there you can see I'm dropping red, darkening, lifting there, or I think I'm putting just some little water in there so that I can get a highlight. Um, the water spreads and leaves a lighter spot in there. So this leaf has at least four five colors in it. I'm sorry, this leaf got out of the frame of the video. And you can see parts of it as I paint. I don't um, draw in all the details. I just go with some experience that I have, how leaves are, I can just uh, paint details on the leaves without having to draw them all in. But if you have to draw them in, draw them in for until you get used to doing it uh, without needing the drawing and this is the leaf that is behind that uh, main stem and I'm leaving it a little bit lighter. I'm starting to do the background and uh, I selected the quinacridone gold for it um, because I wanted to bring warmth into the painting more just warm glow and I will be using also um, dropping in the anthorp blue and uh, some of the quinacridone red and just letting things melt together 
and I'm okay to have some those cauliflower effects. I don't mind at all, I actually like them. And splatters. I try not to do too much dark, dark splatters. Just some um, more light splatters. And then I, there are a few parts where I actually go and I drop, and this is the opera, pink, or pink opera, which way you say it. Um, I want to have specific, more bigger spots in a couple of the leaves and the petal of the rose. And that's the point liner, pencil point liner pen that I use, 0.05 millimeter fine line. And I'm just going to start outlining this. It had to be totally dry before I do this. But I'm gonna leave you looking at what I'm doing here, but please pay attention how I outline things very carefully. I am speeding this up. Um, looks like I'm going fast, but I'm actually very careful what I'm doing here. And I select what I outline and uh, what I leave without outlining. And especially pay attention when I uh, get to the uh, background that I separate some of the colors in the background uh, to get um, I, I well I think that it just adds interest into the background the shapes that are created with the different colors so here I go and I just let you look at what I'm doing here and um, kind of learn this part. A lot of, a lot of um, people when they outline, they kind of just go and draw their own things, but through the painting and putting in the colors, different values, I have already um, predetermined where I'm going to put outlines. It's not that I'm drawing now uh, something new with the outlines. It's already there, everything that I wanna outline. So enjoy this part.
I'm starting to get to the end of my painting, doing final um, few outlining for the background. And I want to show you in the end, in my final painting, how all those lines that we talked about are preserved. Here is the final painting. And I'm gonna show you now the lines. The important pink line is now drawn in blue, but you can see how it is the same as it was in the beginning of the painting. And also there are the pink and yellow lines that are um, also preserved and are the nice curves. And this is the final um, result. And I'm gonna take you in and show you close up how it looks like. And you can just enjoy all the little details. I think it turned out really pretty. And I um, hope that you will have fun trying to do this on your own. Um, feel free to make your own version of it. And um, please come to my group, Art with Anne, Fun with Colors, and post your end results, how it turned out. Um, I don't care if your rose is red, red rose, or pink, pink rose, or peach, peach rose. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the same as mine, but I hope you learned something and you can take, take it and apply it to your own creations. Thank you so much for being with me all this time and following my instructions. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.